Yes! It's Kwaichi! Oh. Okay. What do we have today? We have pans. Pans is our glossary. This is a frying pan. It's not just any old frying pan though. It's a very thick, heavy gauge frying pan. If you're buying a pan, always try to buy heavy gauge. You can tell a heavy gauge pan because it's very heavy. And also, you can feel the build quality. You can see by the rivets and um, the grips and the, the finish, everything about it just feels a lot more higher quality. This is also suitable for induction hobs, which we don't have. We have uh, an electric hob here. Um, an induction hob, for anyone who doesn't know, is the same as an electric hob, except it works by magnets. So you would put this frying pan uh, onto an induction hob, and it would literally heat up in two seconds. If you put it on high heat on induction, it will literally heat up the frying pan in just two seconds. Just like if you were using gas, if you were firing a lot of gas up, it's like using a catering standard gas Bunsen burner chef thing, which I really want. I really want gas, I tell you. But anyway, um, if you're using electric, uh, you might want to pre-warm uh, your hob so that when you put your pan on, it's warm already. Uh, so it warms up the pan a lot quicker. If you do it from cold, you have to wait and sit about. If you're already chopping up stuff, turn on the hob. Put your pan aside though, so that um, if it does start to heat up and you haven't got back to it in time, it doesn't burn anything. It doesn't burn the metal. Heavy gauge means that it doesn't warp. Um, lightweight gauge is what you kind of find when you see those uh, bundles of pans for ten pounds or ten dollars, um, and they're rubbish. They're absolutely rubbish. You, you cook a bit of stuff on them, and the, even if they say they're non-stick, they're rubbish, and you're washing them, and stuff is stuck to them. Non-stick means non-stick. This is a non-stick pan, and when you run water through it, the water doesn't stick to the pan. It just runs straight off the pan. So, a good pan lasts for a long time too and it's very advisable to buy a really really good non-stick pan. This pan retails for about £70 um, which is about $140 but we managed to get it on sale for about £20 or £30 for $60 something like that. Um, but it's well worth it, it is well worth it. Uh, I'll give you a really good example, this is a, a Maya um, for, uh, saucepan, it's 1810 uh, heavy gauge stainless steel with a non-stick interior uh, it's called Stilon, uh, they called this non-stick thing Stilon and it is still non-stick even after seven years of continued use this pan has lasted me seven years so far and I'm sure it will last me seven years more easily uh, it, it hasn't warped, it hasn't, it's got a bit dirty on the outside but you know, inside where you're cooking and stuff, the most important bit, it's perfectly a okay. It's brilliant, and uh, this captures the heat very, very quickly. Everything apart from a frying pan, for um, uh, an electric hob, you want to try and get a, uh, a pan size, the base size, to be about the same size as the hob, to be the most effective um, cooking temperature and stuff uh, for warm up times and things. If it's the same size uh, it will be a lot better. It's okay if it's smaller but if it's bigger then um, you have to worry about heat distribution and saucepans aren't uh, really designed to distribute heat over a, a wide area apart from frying pans. Frying pans are the only pans designed to do that. And saying that, stockpots too. Stockpots are also designed to distribute heat very well. This is a stockpot. This is a very heavy gauge stockpot. This is stainless steel, but if you uh, 
treat it like we did with peanut oil to start off with, it becomes non-stick on the interior. It's very easy to clean um, and also uh, because it doesn't have a non-stick coating we can use wire brush. Um, the wire brush is one of these uh, where you have lots of wires uh, and you can be as abrasive as you like uh, to clean out all those nasty little bits otherwise for non-stick pens I always use uh, a non-stick uh, pad as opposed to one of these which will probably uh, uh, cut some abrasion into your non-stick pen even if they say even if they say on the packaging that they can take um, metal items in and uh, still refrain from using any harsh abrasive materials on uh, your pans. So always use wooden spatulas, okay, buy a load of them so that you don't have to uh, keep washing them up while you're cooking because you don't really want to do washing up while you're cooking. So buy loads of them. We literally have about 20 of these wooden spatulas so that uh, we always have one at hand. Also if uh, you've just been stirring up raw meat uh, as it's cooking, chain spatulas so that uh, you don't let any bacteria harbour. You can uh, start soaking or um, start rinsing off your dirty spatulas. Uh, try to refrain from using plastic plastic spatulas because they tend to melt especially if you leave them in a pan and you should try to leave spatulas out of the pan like so you know just rest it on the edge like so try not to cook your spatulas but when you if you do forget and you probably will forget at some point if you're using a plastic spatula it will melt into your food which is, which is not nice trust me this is our steamer uh, it's a really, really cool steamer, and um, it's massive, it's 28 centimetres in diameter, uh, which means you can put a full plate in. It's got these huge, huge holes in the pan, uh, which means that you can uh, steam to your heart's content. You can put anything in there you want, and it will steam it to death, and it's so it's so good, it's, it's much better than using my old steamer with tiny little holes where hardly any steam goes through the pan and also because it's got such a small base um, the, the water only goes up to about there it's only about one or two litres of water that you can actually put in there the water eventually evaporates and you start smelling uh, this burnt smell in your kitchen and it's because the things run out of water and it's burning your pan and then suddenly you get all that burnt taste, all that burnt smell in your food which is disgusting, trust me. So that's a steamer. Um, my favourite new type of pan uh, is anodized aluminium. If you don't go for heavy gauge steel, which I highly recommend, I would go for a highly anodized, hard anodized, non-stick um, aluminium. It's heavy gauge but it's a lot lot lighter. It's a lot lot lighter than heavy gauge steel because it's aluminium. Aluminium is lighter than steel. And also it doesn't have a non-stick coating as such. The whole material is non-stick. So if you look on the outside of this it looks the same as the inside. And that's because this whole material is non-stick which makes it fantastic for cleaning because afterwards you know if you've got any dirt on the outside or inside it will all clean off you don't have to worry about um, any surface you know clinging you don't have to worry about the baked beans or tomatoes which have kind of caught around here and burnt on the outside it will just wipe off with uh, a non-stick pad I would still use a non-stick pad um, it just comes off so easily. It, it literally, uh, if you look on here, I've just washed this. Uh, if you look on here, there's like no water in here. I just had it upside down for about one minute and there's no water left in the pan. 
It's just, uh, I, what can I say, these pans are so good. This, this is a Circlon pan, which is uh, made by the same people who make Maya. Maya are the parent company of this pan set. Um, this is fantastic for cooking lots of different things, especially rice, because uh, rice tends to stick in a pan. And before you say it, before you say, oh, why don't you just use a rice cooker, is because it's far more satisfying to make your rice yourself in a pan. Also, you can decide on the texture and the kind of flavour you want from your rice. Um, so if you want very, very soft rice, you can add a bit more water. Um, and you can just change more things. You can vary how you cook your rice so that you can get different textures and different tastes even. Um, we have our final pan here, our, sorry, penultimate pan, which is a frying, deep fat frying pan, which is heavy gauge steel again, 1810. I've had this for years and uh, I used to use it, which, and I don't really now because uh, I don't really eat deep fat fried food. Uh, if you do use a deep fat fryer, make sure you use oil which doesn't burn very easily at high temperatures. So stay away from uh, things which um, turn into high trans fatty acids like butter and lard, that kind of stuff. Uh, actually, I think lard, no, no, I don't think lard's okay. But uh, try and use something healthy like... Um, peanut oil. Peanut oil has got the highest burn temperature out of all the oils that I know and uh, it's definitely the oil of choice for high temperature cooking. So uh, if you're cooking say stir fries uh, in a wok um, then definitely definitely use peanut oil. Do not use anything else like olive oil. Uh, olive oil burns at low temperatures and you'll get this burnt taste in your food. Okay, uh, my last pan is the wok, and uh, I used to use this wok a lot, but not anymore. The problem with woks on electric hobs is that they're rubbish. Uh, electric hobs don't heat up hot enough uh, to use a wok properly. You need a very, very, very uh, high temperature gas hob to be able to use a wok. You really have to, because on electric, the heat is not, it's just not hot enough to cook stuff in it properly as, as a wok should. You end up using it just like a frying pan, so you may as well use something which is designed to distribute heat even like a frying pan. Uh, wok is not designed to distribute heat. Uh, evenly. It's designed to heat up right at the bottom and you stir your food round so that you, it gets the very high heat at different times. So you're constantly stirring around this, um, your collection of food. That's how a wok is supposed to work. And when you have a flat bottomed wok, uh, like you do for electric and ring hobs, uh, that distribution things not there. The whole point of a wok is that it's supposed to be completely round at the bottom so that um, you use very very little oil so that it just sits at the bottom. Uh, the oil just keeps running down to the bottom and you don't have to scoop it up with all your food afterwards. But you, uh, with a flat bottom pan you actually end up using a lot of oil because you have to um, it's a much larger surface area that it actually stays on and it's just a pain in the ass so um, I would actually recommend uh, not to use a wok if you don't use gas. I would definitely use uh, a frying pan or um, a saucepan like this or like the Circlon uh, anodized aluminium one instead. So I hope that helped you and uh, uh, feel free to message me if you need any tips or hints on which pan to buy. This is Kwaichi, signing out. Ah.